the original Dead Island released in 2011, and just a short few years later, at E3 2014, we got the now iconic, or should I say, infamous CGI reveal trailer for Dead Island 2. This reveal had fans of the original and gamers everywhere absolutely buzzing, but that was just the beginning of what would go on to become one of the most well-documented video game development hell cycles of all time. And many years after most gamers thought that Dead Island 2 was, well, dead, leaks and rumors and rumblings started to surface that, just like the zombies that roam the streets of L.A., and then we finally got an official reveal. Now, just a short few weeks ago, the game has been released to the masses and is in the hands of gamers everywhere. So, as an openly die-hard fan of the original, I am going to be perfectly candid with you all and give you my full, honest review and thoughts. My name is Brett Murphy, and welcome to Critics Play Games. <laughs> So first things first, I just want to really, I guess, clear the air on why I love the original Dead Island so much, because some of you might be scratching your heads, and justifiably so. The thing that kicked off the hype train for this game in the first place was a CGI trailer that was very dark and dreary and melancholy that showcased a family being attacked by a horde of zombies and the little girl being turned into a zombie after being bitten and launched out of a window. It was set to some ominous music, and it really captured this tone that gamers were truly excited about. And then the game released, and it was absolutely nothing like that. Many called it a generic, clunky, awkward, open-world game that didn't reinvent the wheel or do anything new or exciting, and that it was a buggy, broken, glitchy mess. But that, my friends, is exactly why I fell in love with it. So, to be perfectly honest, I am a sucker for zombie games. I actually, really, any zombie media. And... I was drawn in, not even by the trailer, because I was so young when this game first came out that the cover art alone made me want to get it, and that's exactly what I did. I ran to my local video store, rented the game for a week, and just became simply and purely infatuated with the world of Benoit and the various regions surrounding it. I loved the goofy, buggy glitchiness of it all. I loved the one-note characters. I loved all of the mess and all of the chaos. The game was just so fun, and I have replayed it probably a dozen times. And sure, a lot of that now is nostalgia because, let's face it, the game hasn't really aged all that well. In fact, I don't think it was really aged all that well when it first released. But that doesn't change the fact that this game very much so had a personality of its own that I gravitated towards and have been hooked on since 2011. So, you can understand that when I was a little bit older and I watched E3 like it was a yearly religious event, I was stoked at the announcement of Dead Island 2, and from that CGI trailer, it looked to better replicate the tone that the game was actually going to have. It looked campy, it looked over the top, and it just looked like nonsensical good fun. But then the original developers, Techland, parted ways with publisher Deep Silver and went on to make two Dying Light games before we ever got the Dead Island sequel. Duties were passed on over to Jaeger Studios, and after a few years, they parted ways with the studios as well. Then Sumo Digital in 2016 took over, and they parted ways with the studios as well. And finally, it was revealed that Damn Studios was taking over production of the game, but then things were radio silent for years until the previously mentioned leaks, rumors, and rumblings started to come out, and then boom, we had our first official re-reveal trailer for Dead Island 2, and it was completely different aside from the setting and really just the general vibe of the game. 
And before I ever even picked up my copy to start playing, I knew what I was getting into. I knew that this wasn't going to blow my mind or, again, like the original, reinvent the wheel or do anything new or exciting that was going to just change the genre as a whole. I just wanted some good, simple, fun, zombie slaying mayhem, and is that what I got? Well, let's get into it. So this isn't going to be a traditional review, I don't plan on going through like my positives and my negatives and my this and my that, and then revealing some kind of score or letter grade at the end of it. This is going to be more so in the same tone and vein as like a before you buy, or a discussion video. Not really a video essay or a full blown review, but more so a letter from me me as a diehard lover of the original to essentially people who may be considering this game or if by some chance anyone who worked on it wants to watch this and listen in to get my full thoughts as someone who no matter how many times the game was delayed no matter how many times people thought it was canceled or how many times it went radio silent I was still holding out hope and still looking forward to it and still got it day one. So to kick things off, let's talk about the world and the sort of overall look and tone of the game. Well, the big elephant in the room, at least to me, which I always thought was hilarious, and it's not really that big of a thing, but Dead Island 2 isn't set on an island. It's set in a fictional version of Los Angeles, aka LA, known in this game as Hell A. Very clever. But I honestly don't have a problem with that at all, and I will explain why. But I really should touch on this first, because not everyone knows this. But this game is not, I repeat, not a full open world game. But again, that wasn't a problem for me. It's instead more like a cluster of large explorable areas. Yes, you do have a mini loading screen when jumping from area to area. But if you combine all of them together, it's a pretty massive map. And with the speeds that current consoles and PCs are able to run at, half the time your loading screens are like five seconds max. So really, it kind of still does feel like an open world game, but if you need a bit more context to sort of picture it in your head, think of games like The Last of Us Part 2, or even really the first game, because the first game you had like the base island where like the resort was, and then you had like this little town, and then you had like the sewer system and stuff like that, and it was really just a cluster of a few different areas that you jumped between through loading screens, and it's sort of the same idea here. However, there is a ton of variety in the locations that keep it feeling fresh, creative, and interesting. You go from like movie studio lots to Bel Air to Beverly Hills to this big hotel kind of like you got in the first game to military checkpoints and things like that. Like there is a lot of variety in the location. So in some ways, I actually think that the developer's approach works better because of that because rather than just having one large map that a lot of it feels the same or like two really large maps we have a bunch of large limited locations but there is so much variety in all of them graphically the game is gorgeous the locations themselves have a ton of detail the character models are vastly improved over that of the original because the original like just the character models were ugly. There's no two ways about it. They had dead eyes. Their skin looked weird and plasticky. And they're just horrendous to look at. Even back when the game first released, they were ugly. But nevertheless, the weapon detail is also super sharp. Another thing that I feel many people are overlooking with this game is the variety in the undead. Not only within the variants of zombies like walkers, shamblers, runners, and the other specialty zombies, but the variety in terms of the character models. I think the original Dead Island game had like four zombie models on repeat, and that was pretty much it. This one has a metric ton of different models with different clothing based on the part of the map you're in, different weights, different states of decay, and so on. I was super impressed by this and it really helped make the world come to life and the situation feel real. As for the tone of the game, it is just... It, it's a take it or leave it kind of tone if I'm being completely honest. Some people might be annoyed by like the zany, wild, crazy, over the top, really just arrogant, in your face tone of the game, but some people like me will enjoy it. I thought that many of the jokes landed, I thought that the characters were clever, and it was funny, and it was just the right amount of chaotic, goofy fun. And again, that's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I definitely vibed with it, because 
that's just what I was hoping for. I wanted a game that didn't take itself too seriously like the original and just a good, fun, old school zombie game. You watch the trailers, you're gonna know exactly what you're getting into, because that is the exact tone of the game, unlike the fast one that the original pulled on us. As for the story, uh, take it or leave it. Most zombie games with good stories are few and far between. Unless you're something like The Last of Us or some indie games, very rarely do these kinds of games have a decent story. It's meant to be the ultimate zombie slaying playground, and that's exactly what it is. However, I will say that despite the story stuff being as basic as could possibly be, there's a ton of fun to be had in terms of the zany characters and well-integrated side missions. All of the main characters have their merits, they have their charms and their own unique personalities. I went with Jacob, just because in terms of like his abilities and stuff, he seemed to be the most balanced overall, and he's also the guy on the cover, and I just thought he looked cool, so I went with him. But each character does have their own positives and negatives when it comes to their attributes, so adjust according to your playstyle, even though I don't really think playstyle comes into play all that much here, because it's all essentially just button mashing between light and holding for heavy attacks. But some people like clunkier heavy hitters, some people like the speedy but less health, and some people like the balance approach where you're not too strong but you have a good amount of health and a good amount of speed and so on, and that's kind of what I went for. But getting a bit deeper into the weeds here, the combat in this game, which is the main thing, has got to be some of the most satisfying first person melee combat I've ever had the pleasure of playing and I am not exaggerating here. Normally, it feels weird. It feels awkward. It feels clunky. You think about even some of the best first-person melee games of all time, like Skyrim, or really any other zombie game, even like the Dying Light games, and a lot of the time the hits feel like weightless, or like they're not even connecting, or again, it's clunky, and the screen is shaking, and blah 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 blah, but in this game, it feels good, it feels weighty, it feels impactful. When you hit a zombie, your controller vibrates just the right way, it feels like you're making good contact, and you are doing damage, and you are slicing, and you you are crunching and it feels good and like it should. Again, this has to be some of the best first person melee combat I have ever played and the guns are just fine. I mean, it's not going to be the smoothest first person shooting you've ever experienced, but I think it's on the better side than most zombie games are, but it just, you know, it feels okay. It, it's serviceable, but the best part is the variety. There are so many weapons. There is a dodge, a block, a kick, a slide attack, a drop kick, environmental attacks, and above all else, the brand new gore system called Flesh. And this new gore system is simply unbelievable. Easily the best gore system I've ever seen in a video game. The zombies react accordingly based on where you hit them, what you hit them with, light attack or heavy attack, and so on. You are chopping off limbs, slashing and slicing clothes away, and, and then skin and the meat and the bones and everything else. You're breaking bones, you're crushing skulls. All of this has never felt so good. If you set them on fire, they burn. If you cover them in acid, they melt. If you electrocute them, they fry. It is refreshing refreshing and bloody brilliant, and it manages to always keep the game engaging, unique, and above all else, the most important ingredient to this, fun. It keeps things fun because you're always trying new ways, new approaches, new things, and because it's procedurally generated, every attack and every impact and every final blow and end result feels different. But let's change gears a little bit here and get even further down in the weeds, and people are going to be a bit divided on this next bit, and that is the skill tree because it doesn't really exist. It's on a new card system where you slowly unlock the ability to use more cards and you gain cards as the game progresses and then you have to pick and choose which ones you want to use. Now I think this does act as a good balance because for instance you can't use like a block and a dodge at the same time. You have to pick if you want to block or if you want to dodge and personally I see no problem with it. Would I have preferred a traditional skill tree or progression system? Yes of course but I don't mind this at all if I'm being completely truthful. The crafting though is where the money is at. 
so much room for creativity and imagination. Now, it's not as wild as something like Dead Rising, but it definitely helps to keep things lively and entertaining as you can add mods and other perks to your weapons and really make them your own and just have a blast just destroying zombies with all kinds of things. You have workbenches that are scattered around the map and then you can use blueprints that you find or earn for crafting and fix up your weapons because yes, they do have a durability meter once again. But I do like the idea that they implemented in this game that you can match your weapon level to your current level. That way, if you have like a favorite weapon that you made, you can ensure that it's always going to be useful and do damage. So I thought that was a nice little added perk. The last thing I want to touch on that almost nobody has been talking about is the launch state of this game as it has easily been one of the best in recent memory. No microtransactions, no base content locked behind paywalls, no game breaking bugs, just a good old fashioned finished game. Sure, there's some visual glitches here and there and some goofy AI stuff, but it's all harmless and doesn't hinder the experience in any way, shape, or form. I feel this is a point that's worth mentioning and that many people are overlooking because I was so happy to have what felt like a fully completed, ready-for-release game that also didn't destroy my hard drive. And that feels so rare nowadays that it's actually worth mentioning that this is a releasable game. It came out in a finished, polished state. To wrap things up, whether this game is worth the full price of admission or not is going to be up to you. It's going to be up to the individual. It does not offer anything new or groundbreaking. It doesn't redefine the genre. It's not going to win any Game of the Year awards and so on. But if you're in the market for a good 20 to 30 hour zombie slaying sandbox with a ton of personality, then this is for you. It feels like an old school game brought to the modern day and I totally dig that. It gave me a mix of so much nostalgia while also offering plenty of new things to sink my teeth into. As a fan of the original, this satisfied my Dead Island sequel needs finally and I left feeling happy and knowing that I'll be returning to LA time and time again.